With the peak of Omicron in Ontario potentially weeks away, the Ford government laying out their plans to slowly lift pandemic restrictions. So let's break this down. The province's three-phase plan starts January 31st. It means indoor dining, retailers, theaters, they can reopen at half capacity. Come mid-March, the Ford government plans to lift all capacity limits in all indoor spaces, but vaccine passports and mask mandates, they remain. There's no word when postponed surgeries and procedures will resume, and that has a lot of people scratching their heads here. So some have praised this reopening. Others say it might be too soon as we see our hospitals continuing to struggle. Let's get reaction now from infectious diseases expert Dr. Isaac Bogosh joining again. Uh, nice to have you back, Dr. Bogosh. Hey, good to see you, Melanie. All right, I want to start right, right out of the gates here. What do you think was right about this reopening plan, the announcement? What did you like about what you heard? In general, I thought it was, you know, we separate the science from the policy, uh, from the politics. And, you know, when we look at where we are in Ontario right now, we are seeing a plateau of ICU admissions and hospitalizations. That's great. There's still a lot of people in the ICU. There's still a lot of people in the hospital, but it doesn't seem to be getting worse. It seems to be plateauing, which probably means that cases have been on the decline for maybe a week or so. So that's that's obviously good news. Uh, we still have to be careful here because obviously there's a lot of COVID in the community and kids have just gone back to school. But remember, this policy to carefully reopen starts in 10 days from now. And that's a long time from now. I, I think it's actually pretty reasonable. I get that there's a lot of huffing and puffing uh, at times, especially online. But I think the key thing that stuck out to me was that it's, it's, it's slow. It starts in 10 days. Uh, and they explicitly stated that if things aren't headed in the right direction, they'd pivot and they'd, they'd turn it around. So I think that's, that's all actually very reasonable. Your thoughts, you know, obviously you work in, in a hospital environment as well, and you were seeing your colleagues uh, on the front lines um, and struggling. We had uh, a critical care nurse on the other day, quite emotional with what she is dealing with on a day-to-day. -day. Um, we didn't hear a lot when it comes to these postponements of these surgeries. And again, I reiterate, when we say elective surgeries, these could be life-saving surgeries. Does that concern you? Yeah, I agree with you in the sense that, like, there's there's nothing elective about these surgeries. In fact, I've been calling them scheduled surgeries because they're not elective. People need to have them. They might not need to have them this second, but they certainly need to happen, and we would want them sooner rather than later. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, we have to acknowledge that the healthcare system is is very, very stretched at this moment. And even though we are plateauing, that doesn't mean that things are we're out of the woods. It means we have to have a reasonable decline in cases before those surgeries can ramp up. But again, I'll take it back to the policy and the science here. You know, they are plateauing now, and this doesn't start for about 10 days from now. So a lot can happen in, in 10 days. And again, what they stated, I just go by what they say, right? And what they said was, if things aren't headed in the right direction, they're okay to turn things around. That sounds very reasonable to me. And, you know, we've seen them do that in the past as well. So, you know, I get that there's always politics, science, public health, and sometimes those Venn diagrams don't overlap. Mm -hmm. But in a case like this, I didn't think it was, I, I mean, I thought it was, I thought it was a reasonable approach. Dr. Bogosh, I want to get your take on, on testing and, or, or lack thereof for availability for certain, um, segments of the population really it's only available to high-risk groups and then those in the school setting but they must be symptomatic and so a lot of people are questioning some of the numbers and why not start ramping up yet again to get an accurate picture of what's going on within our communities what do you think can or should be done i understand that labs are uh, inundated right now and, and it's uh, about capacities there as well but do you think that we can change something you know, it's hard to change and just flick a switch and then significantly boost capacity. That's always a challenge. And sadly, we don't have the capacity to offer testing in the province to, you know, everybody that wants it or needs it. I would even, like you said, I think it would be extremely helpful to have more testing in the schools and have a better understanding of what's happening in the school environment, and especially in the context of this reopening plan. Because if you think about things that can set us off course, it's well, you've got two million kids who are sitting indoors with each other for eight hours a day, five days a week. Like that can certainly cause a bump in cases and that can set us off course. It would be very helpful to know what's happening in the school system. So, you know, if we did have a greater capacity of testing, yes, I would focus it on the schools uh, as, as the next priority item. 
it doesn't appear that that's the case. And that's really unfortunate because we're two years into this pandemic. We should have the capacity by now to do this. Indeed. Uh, finally, for you, I just want to get your take on the role of antiviral treatments. Uh, obviously, Paxlovid with the Pfizer that has been you know, starting to get distributed to provinces and territories. Um, how big of a game changer could this, should this be? You know, it's, it looks very promising. It really does. This uh, pill appears to reduce the risk of hospitalization and death, especially in those who are at greatest risk for it. I've been very careful to use the word game changer because I don't really think there's a lot of game changes. I think this just adds incremental safety, incremental benefit to the individuals that get this. And of course, eventually when we have enough of it, it probably can alleviate pressure on the healthcare systems. But we've got to make sure that we set up programs in place to get this out, right? You've got to start the drug quickly, within five days of symptom onset. Easy to say, hard to do, because as we just talked about, there's a paucity of tests. You've got to have a test, either a PCR or a rapid test, and then start the pills right away. So, I mean, it was time to start thinking about how this was going to be rolled out a month ago so that when we actually have these tablets in place, we can get systems going so that the people that need this the most get access to it. Yes, it will help, but of course, you know, like anything else, we have to plan, and, and sometimes we don't see the best planning. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Bogosh, we got to let you go because I know uh, time uh, is, is limited for now. But in, in one word, if I can ask you do, you, do you feel optimistic in where we are? I think we're in a precarious place, but I'm cautiously optimistic over the next couple of weeks ahead. Okay. Appreciate your time and your insight, as always. Thank you so much, Dr. Isaac Bogosh. Have a great day. Be, be well. You too. All right.